This is the solution to quiz five. Okay, so it says solve this quadratic by factoring. Okay, so since the method was explicitly specified, that's what we must do. So 4x plus 4x squared plus 9x and then minus 9 is equal to 0. And what we want to do is we want to factor this quadratic. So we want to find two numbers, two numbers uh, that are factors of the first and the last. So 4 times negative 9, which is negative 36. And we want these to sum to the middle number, 9. OK, so how about negative 1 and 36? Well, that'd be 35. That's not what we want. Okay, how about negative 2 and 18? That would be 16. That's not what we want. How about negative 3 and 12? That is 9. And that's what we want. We're so happy about that because it matches this one. Okay, that means that we're going to c consider the left hand side here as being 4x squared and then minus 3x and then plus 12x uh, and then minus 9 equal to 0. So the whole point of this table right here was to take this 9x and split it in this way and say well yes it is 9x and we're going to consider it as being negative 3x plus 12x so now what we're going to do is we're going to form groups and say that this is 4x squared minus 3x and then plus 12x minus 9x uh, minus 9 equal to 0. And now with each group, we're going to factor out the greatest common factor. Okay, so then this one, the greatest common factor is x. And what remains inside would be 4x minus 3. And then in this one, the greatest common factor is 3. And then what remains inside is 4x minus 3. So I can tell that I probably did this step correctly because this is the same. So we're happy about this. If these had been different, if this didn't show up in both places, that would mean that I would have made an error previous to this. So the fact that this factor shows up twice means that we can do the following. <clears throat> we should be able to factor out 4x minus 3. So 4x minus 3 can factor out to right here. And then what goes in here is the greatest common factors that you factored out. So this x to here, and this 3 to here. So x plus 3. So now we have the product of these factors is 0. And then as a result, it must be the case x plus 3 is 0, or either the first factor is 0, or the second factor is 0. 4x minus 3 is 0. So now here's two separate and simpler equations that can be solved. So x is negative 3, or uh, 4x is 3. So x is 
negative 3, or x is 3 fourths. So that's the answer to part A. Okay, this is solved by completing the square. Okay, in this case, we'll collect everything with x on the left hand side, so x squared minus 6x, and then I'll put everything that doesn't have x on the right hand side, so I'll move that 1 over, and on the right hand side it's negative 1. <coughs> then in this horizontal space I provided myself, I'm going to add 0, <coughs> so plus 0. But we're going to be clever about the way we select that 0. So this would be x squared minus 6x. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add <coughs> plus something over 2, square that much, and then we're going to just subtract that same amount. And what goes in the numerator, <coughs> what goes in the numerator is this coefficient. So negative 6 and negative 6. <coughs> this trick only works when uh, this coefficient here is 1. So when the quadratic in question is monic. So now, negative 6 over 2, that's negative 3 squared is 9. So then this would be x squared minus 6x plus 9 minus 9 is negative 1. Okay. Now, these three terms are now a perfect square. And we can factor them as x minus 3 squared, and then minus 9 equal negative 1. So now we have this square. So now I'm going to move that 9 over. x minus 3 squared is 8. And now this is a good position to be in, because now we have a far simpler equation because we have something squared is 8. So when we compute the square root of both sides, we can get rid of the square, but, but the radical and the exponent do not cancel each other because this is an even radical and this is an even exponent. So what becomes of the radical is that it becomes absolute value. So the absolute value of x minus 3 is square root 8. So that means that ignoring what's inside, if we put a square root of 8 inside of the absolute value, that would work. And if we put a negative square root 8 inside of the absolute value, that also would work. So therefore there's two solutions. So x minus 3 is negative square root 8, or x minus 3 is square root 8. So the solutions are x is 3 minus square root 8, or x is 3 plus square root 8. <coughs> okay. So question two, find the discriminant, state the number of real solutions, and tell if the solutions are rational, real but not rational, or complex but not real. So notably, notably this question does not say solve uh, the equation. <coughs> so it's not necessary to find the solutions. Okay, so as a reminder, Every quadratic can be 
expressed in this way, and the discriminant is usually denoted by d, and its formula is b squared minus 4ac. This is the expression that's under the radical in the quadratic formula. So on this particular exercise, a is 1, b is negative 16, and c is 64. And therefore, the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, that would be negative 16 squared minus 4 times 1 times uh, 64. OK. So that would be uh, 16, negative 16 squared would be 256. And then minus, um, oh, that's also 256. So the discriminant in this case is 0. Find the discriminant. OK, so then therefore, <coughs> the number of real solutions is one. There's one real solution. And because the discriminant, <coughs> because the square root of the discriminant is zero, which is to say, rational and for this reason that means that uh, there is one rational solution <clears throat> okay so that can be uh, seen just using the the discriminant and then as a check so this is the answer, but as a check, I'd like for you to observe that this factors pretty easily, actually, because x squared minus 16x plus 64 is just x minus 8 squared equal to 0. So there's just one uh, real solution, and it's 8, and 8 is rational. So that all uh, agrees. Okay, similarly, down here, the discriminant uh, would be 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 13. OK, so then that would be 16 minus uh, 52. And therefore, whatever that is, the discriminant is negative. OK, uh, as a result, the number of real solutions is 0 because there are two complex solutions. and. That also answers the next part, because they're complex. OK, very good. So solve this equation. OK, so I see this equation has a radical in it. So to solve it, eventually, we're going to have to square. But before we even get started, it's important to check the natural domain. So the natural domain. So there's nothing wrong with 0. Nothing can go wrong with that. Nothing could go wrong with this term, with the x. But this radical this radical uh, requires a non-negative argument. So what we need is we need for 2x plus 3 to be greater than or equal to 0. So solving this, that's 2x is greater or equal to negative 3. So x is greater or equal to negative 3 halves which is to say 
that negative 3 halves to infinity is the natural domain. Okay, so now we're going to perform some algebraic operations. So what we need to do is we need to isolate this radical get it by itself. So I'll move that x to the other side. And fundamentally, to get rid of the radical, we need to square both sides. Now this is a necessary operation so that we can get rid of the radical. But squaring both sides is not truth preserving. It's possible to modify the truth when you do this. And that means that any time you perform a, a, an operation that's not truth preserving, that means that when you find solutions at the end, you have to check them back into the original equation. So I'm marking that so that I remember that I did something that was possibly, possibly modifying the truth. Okay, so then the left hand side is then 2x plus 3. And then the right hand side is x squared. Okay. So I'll move everything to the right. So 0 is x squared minus 2x, 2x. minus 3, uh, and then this factors into what? x minus 3 times uh, x plus 1, and therefore the solutions are x is 3 or x is negative 1. But we arrived here we arrived at these two possibilities by way of an operation that might that was not truth preserving so it's possible that uh, one or more of these is not legitimate so we have to check now so check the original equation okay so we'll check x is 3 so checking x is 3, uh, that would say that 3 plus the square root of 2 times 3 plus 3 is 0. Well, 2 times 3 is 6, plus 3 is 9, the square root of 9 is 3, so this would be 3 plus 3 equal to 0, which is false. So that means that 3 is actually not a solution. Okay, now I'll check x is negative 1. So that would be negative 1 plus the square root of 2 times negative 1 plus 3 is equal to 0. Well, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 plus 3 is 1. The square root of that is 1. So that's negative 1 plus 1 is 0, which is true. And therefore, the conclusion is that x is negative 1 is the only solution. OK, so solve this equation in the reals. OK, there's two possibilities. <coughs> So I'll write this a little bigger. So x squared plus 13x is 30. So because this is an absolute value equation, what it's saying is that if I cover up the argument, the thing that's being put inside of the absolute value, if I just cover it up, then if I could put a 30 in there, if I could put a 30 in there, then this equation would be true. And if I could put a negative 30 in there, this equation would also be true. So this splits into two possibilities. And we'll have to do them 
we'll have to do each of them. So one of the possibilities is that x squared plus 13x is negative 30, and the other possibility is that x squared plus 13x is positive 30. Okay, so then two separate quadratic equations. So from your instructor's point of view, uh, this question is in some ways just a fancy way to make you solve two different quadratics. Okay, so then those two quadratics are x squared plus 13x uh, plus 30 equal to 0 or x squared plus 13x minus 30 is 0. <coughs> okay, so let's think. Uh, can we think of two numbers whose product is uh, 30 and whose sum is 13? Okay, how about 3 and 10? So this would be x plus 3 multiplied by x plus 10 is 0. And then or, how about two numbers whose product is negative 30 and whose sum is positive 13? Okay, how about 15 and negative 2? So now, the original equation split into two, and now each one of these splits into two, because one possibility is negative 3 or negative 10, and this one has negative 15 or positive 2. So x is negative 3, x is negative 10, x is negative 15, or x is 2. So now, to be clear about the contrast, one of the contrasts between A and B, is that on part A, when we squared both sides, that's not a truth-preserving operation, which means that that needs to be checked into the original equation. Each one of these candidates had to be checked. However, all of these operations were truth preserving, so these, strictly speaking, d do not need to be checked uh, for correctness. Uh, but just to satisfy my own curiosity, I'll check them real quick. So negative 3 uh, squared would be 9, and then uh, plus 13 times negative 3. Well, 13 times negative 3 is negative 39, so that would be 9 minus 39, so that'd be negative 30, the absolute value of which is 30. Okay. If I plug in negative 10, negative 10 squared is 100, uh, minus 130. So that would be uh, negative 30 inside of absolute value, and that's 30. So now 15, 225. Uh, and then plus negative uh, 195, which is uh, 30, the absolute value of which is 30. And then 2 squared is 4 plus 26 is 30, absolute value is 30. So all of those work.